Hi, I'm Heidi Villegas with Healing Harvest Homestead. And usually I do herbal videos and how to use essential oils safely. And uh, basically I'm, a, I'm an herbalist. <laughs> so that's pretty much the crux of what I do. And I garden and I grow my herbs. But I'm also into uh, some survivalism and some being just prepared, generally prepared. I'm not over the top crazy like, you know, some of the uh, hardcore preppers are at all, but I, I do believe in being prepared. And I wanted to just show you my get home bag because this is uh, something I truly believe that every woman and man especially needs. Um, actually, I think women, is, but I think everybody needs a get home bag, but it's a little bit different than a bug out bag. And I was getting ready to go through it, um, which I used to do every six months and just change things out for the seasons. Um, and I thought I would go ahead and share uh, with you a little bit about this. Now I'm just gonna say right up front, this might be a little embarrassing because I have not gone through this get home bag in about four years since we moved here to Idaho. And the reason I haven't is because I never go anywhere. <laughs> I just, I work from home now and I'm here all the time. And on the rare occasions where we go into town to go to a grocery store, we're generally not that far away. Um, so honestly, we just never go anywhere. But with that said, this has been weighing on my mind for a while now, and I think I really need to go through it. So I'm going to open up this bag that hasn't been touched in four years <laughs> and show you what I have in it and what I plan to have in it that's not there. Okay, I'm a little worried because I have snacks in here and obviously they're going to have to go in the probably be disposed of. But um, one thing I keep in my get home bag are baby wipes. I like unscented ones and you can make your own too, so you don't need to purchase them. I carry a small roll of duct tape because duct tape, as we all know, is everybody's um, helper. <laughs> Here we've got flushable wipes. So if you uh, need to uh, basically use the restroom and there isn't one, um, I really like these because they're biodegradable and um, they're, help they're helpful to use. So I'm gonna put these with the um, baby wipes here, the duct tape. I'm gonna try to start making like a little stash section here. Alrighty, I've got sunscreen in here. Um, sunscreen is in there only because where I was working uh, back when we lived in Southern Nevada in the middle of the Mojave Desert, I was working in a little tiny town that was quite a distance from our home. So I wanted to have sunscreen available. Um, I just think it's a smart thing to have. Um, I also had some hot hands warmers and that was in case it was cold. I think the last time I put this bag together, it was cold. And here I've got some ammunition. That bag, I don't think I would keep that bag in there or this box in here because it is quite heavy. Um, more hot hands. And again, I just wanna say that this is not a, a really great <laughs> put together to go bag at this point right now, but it will be in a moment. Alrighty, in this bag, I've got And I find that gallon-sized plastic bags are really helpful to keep things of certain types together. But here I've got my life straw. I've got a rag that's clean. I've got Mylar blankets. So this is in case you have to, uh, you know, sleep somewhere or, you know, find a spot. Uh, I was thinking about, well, heck, if I had to walk home from the school where I worked at and I would have to traipse 14 miles through the Mojave Desert. I may not make it home before dark. I may need to, you know, curl up and rest or I might be hurt. Um, but Mylar blankets are, are, these are lightweight. They're nice to have and they can not only keep you warm, but they can cover you and uh, give you some protection and, you know, maybe just help you rest. <laughs> I also have some nylon cording. I'm gonna put that over here with my duct tape. Matches. These are waterproof. You should always have matches on hand. Another Mylar blanket. 
And then I've got some uh, AAA batteries and these fit into my flashlight. So my flashlight's in here as well. Okay. Alrighty. Next up, we've got the snack bag. <laughs> and I'm not even gonna open these. These are all definitely expired at this point. Yep, <laughs> 2017. <laughs> but um, I like to have jerky, nuts, um, and just healthy energy bars, things like that that are um, going to sustain energy without dropping your blood sugar levels. So what you don't want as far as snacks go, you don't want sugary, sweet things that are going to um, spike your blood sugar and then drop it because um, that is not going to be healthy and it's not going to give you a sustained level of energy. What you do want is high protein, um, maybe protein with some fat. Uh, like I said, nuts are really helpful. So those kinds of foods that are going to give you some sustained energy and not drop your blood sugar. So low sugar, low carbs, okay? That's what you want in your snack bag. All right, moving on. Okay, we're gonna get into the main pack now. All right, a jacket. I like to have a lightweight jacket or a vest. Um, I recently just fallen in love with the uh, North Face uh, down vest. They're super lightweight. A lightweight jacket like that, a down jacket that you could actually roll up tightly and put into like a small bag would be perfect for your get home bag. This particular coat is really great. It's one of my favorite jackets. Um, but it's a little bit heavy. So if you think you might need to be walking, you might want to just get that little down coat and, um, you know, pack it in there. <laughs> All right. I'm going to lay this right down here. Okay. I have a pair of jeans in here because you never know when you are going to need to change your clothes. When I was uh, teaching school, I was dressed professionally. Oftentimes I'd be wearing tights or um, boots with a little heel or something like that. So I always packed a spare set of clothes that were comfortable that I could walk in. Now I've put on a few pounds <laughs> since I packed this bag last. So I am definitely gonna be changing out my my jeans and my, and my hiking clothes. Um, and other kinds of clothes that you could consider would be leggings for ladies anyway. Um, comfortable leggings that um, are are a little bit thicker that you can walk in really well can be really helpful and they now have them for different temperatures too. Here we've got water this is a little bit crushed up but you do need water and I didn't I don't pack a lot of water in my get home bags just because I don't expect that I'm going to um, be gone for a long time. So this is probably a good time to talk about the difference between a get home bag and a um, to go bag or a bug out bag. Very, very different things. So a bug out bag is going to be a larger bag that you're going to pack with about 72 hours worth of supplies so that you can leave your home and get to a safe area. So I don't plan on leaving my home. <laughs> we're, you know, we're, we're all gonna be in different situations here, but my home is my get home place. This is where I wanna end up because our home is where we have all of our supplies and we're ready and, um, you know, this is a safe place. We live in a rural area. There's not a lot of people around and we have good visuals and really great neighbors, a super community. So I wanna get home. <laughs> That's what I wanna do. So I do carry minimal water. Now in my vehicle, I carry more. I carry, you know, some uh, gallon jars. So if I had to, I could stuff a gallon in here and, and get going. But um, generally speaking, I'm just not gone that long. Uh, another thing I love to keep in my get home bag uh, if it's uh, going into the winter months and I'm going to need a coat, I like to layer, but I find that just having a long sleeve uh, t-shirt of some kind 
is helpful. This is a, a cotton t-shirt and it's an Under Armour, but now they've got uh, the, the high performance gear that wicks sweat. Those are really helpful. And even like at Costco, you can buy those 32 degree uh, cold weather gear tops that wick sweat and they also breathe. Uh, they're also extremely lightweight and they're excellent for layering. So there's a whole lot of options out there um, in terms of clothing. All right. The bulk of what I have in in the the bulk of what I have in the main portion of my get home bag is going to be spare clothes. I've got a good pair of socks for hiking. Um, I have another spare t-shirt in case uh, that other one gets wet. I have a spare set of panties, actually two. <laughs> so I think that's a really good idea. Oh, I forgot about this shirt. I love this shirt. <laughs> I'll be wearing this, yay. Um, all right. Moving on. Uh, also, along with the layering, th layering theme, um, I really like to have useful tank tops and um, you know short sleeve shirts. Just and you don't need a ton. I I probably overpack the clothes because I'm really big into being comfortable. But as long as you can move freely and walk quickly, then you're good to go. Um, another item that's not here right now that I always keep with my get home bag is are my hiking boots. And what I do with those is I just keep the laces tied to the top so everything's together in my vehicle. And uh, that's what I do, but you, you won't see those here right now. Okay, let's talk a little bit about uh, flashlights. Um, I love having good flashlights. Uh, you can also keep, uh, if you think you're going to need it, a scope or, uh, you, you know, one of those little monocles that you can uh, telescope and so you can see the distance if you need to. But I do definitely want you to have a flashlight in your get home bag and definitely another one in your vehicle. They're very helpful. Um, and then I'd like a multi-tool of some kind. So this is a Swiss Army uh, knife that has multiple tools that are useful that I can uh, use, including a corkscrew, different kinds of knives, um, openers, things like that. So there we go. Um, one other thing I want to discuss is self-defense. Um, I do think that uh, women and men need to have some sort of form of self-defense with them in their get home bags. I'm not going to show you what I use uh, because I'm not sure what the rules are <laughs> on, on YouTube. So I'm just going to avoid that topic altogether here, but, but definitely consider what you might need. Um, and you know, if you are really into the self-defense, there are holders that you can put under your jackets to hold certain kinds of uh, things you might want to have at hand quickly. Um, one more thing I'm going to just talk about are medical supply kits and also uh, herbal supplies. So I, I like to have things that I know I might need. So I suffer from allergies occasionally and I also believe that you should have some kind of a pain reliever on hand. So I love to carry uh, some uh, tinctures that I'm going to be using. And if you've been watching my channel for very long, you know that we haven't taken any kind of over-the-counter medicine or prescription medicine in well over 10 years at this point because we make it all ourselves. We make it using the plants that live around us in the environment that we forage for or that we grow ourselves primarily. And I do purchase some of them, but we make everything. We make our pain relievers. We make our uh, cold and flu uh, remedies. We make things for managing, um, for me, high blood pressure. Um, for my husband, uh, he has other issues and we, we just make everything. <laughs> we support our bodies naturally with the plants. So that is what I choose to carry in here. But with that said, you should give some consideration to medical supplies. So I have these handy kits that I got from uh, Amazon. This is actually a survival kit, this, this little guy right here. And it also, it comes with the Mylar blankets that I just showed you and um, just a multitude of other um, items 
Now it's a little heavy. One thing I try to consider uh, when I'm putting my to-go bag together is what kinds of things I want in it. It comes with a little spoon <laughs> and it comes with a little flashlight. It comes with a little straw. So this is a very, very nice little kit. Um, more nylon cord. So zip ties, things like that. Um, one other thing I want to mention too is that if you are not going to be too far from your home, your to-go bag could actually just reflect how far you are. If you're only going to be walking five miles to get to your home and you're in an urban environment, then you need to take those factors into consideration. Um, you know, you need to take into account what, what you're going to need just to get yourself to a safe place at home. And and when I'm talking about, you know, getting home, um, obviously, if we're living in a city especially, we probably have people we can call to help us out. You're not going to use your to-go bag necessarily in, in those instances, but you should take it with you. Um, but if you are in a place and there's, uh, there's you know, uh, conflicts going on or um, fighting in the streets or uh, you're in a dangerous area, you, your go bag is going to, you're going to want it to reflect that, right? So, all right. Um, and then this is a field trauma bag. This is for actually if you end up with a serious wound or something like this and you need to take care of heavy bleeding or um, even stitching things up, uh, things like this of this nature. All right, so now I've showed you what was in my to-go bag four years ago, and uh, now I'm going to show you what I'm going to include in it now at this point in my life and living in the area where I'm living now. All right, so let's go ahead and fill this bag back up for right now. Um, one thing about living where we live now, we're in an area where there are four seasons. So I, my plan, my current plan is to go ahead and um, redo my bag about every three months for the current season uh, that we're in or that's coming up. Back when we were down in Southern Nevada, we lived about an hour outside of Las Vegas in a little off-grid village. And uh, there we had about two seasons. <laughs> we had hot and we had cold. Uh, up here we've got multiple seasons. And it's a really good idea here in uh, the Idaho Panhandle to be prepared for different kinds of weather. So I'm going to tell you how I address that. All right, so first of all, we'll just work backwards. I'm gonna go ahead and start with the clothing aspect first. Um, you only need, you know, a change of clothes and that's just in case. So most of the time when I run to town, I'm wearing jeans or something like that. Most of the time I'm actually all ready to start hoofing it. <laughs> so I'm gonna put some things in here though, just in case I'm not, maybe I'm coming home from church or something or whatever. So I like to have uh, pants and right now we are um, in late winter. It's very cold. So I love these, um, Polar Tech Pants by Athleta. They're lightweight and they're very warm and they're thick. So I like these. They roll up really nicely into a small little bundle. The other thing I'm going to add are a pair of uh, just cotton leggings in case it's a little bit warmer. And I like these. These are from Pact and they're a wonderful pair of, of leggings. Um, I'm going to include a pair of gloves. I like these without the fingers because they are, you know, the little you can stick your fingers out of them because that way you can actually operate your hands and things if you need to. I have got a little tank top. I have got a long sleeve shirt and I've got a warm hat. So next time I change my bag out, I'm going to probably include a ball cap or, or maybe one of the buffs, things like this. Um, I've got a pair of wool blend socks. These are quite warm and they're also thin and very comfortable. Jacket-wise, what I'm including here is my down North Face vest. And again, this, I love these because um, I really would like a coat one day. <laughs> it's like this. You can roll them up very, very tightly and stuff them in a bag and they don't take up a lot of space and they're super lightweight. So I do love these. And then this coat is not going in my to-go bag, but this is one that I keep in my vehicle with me at all times. It's extremely warm. It's got a good long length on it and there's pockets everywhere. So I really, really love this uh, lightweight jacket. It's also lightweight <laughs> and uh, very, very 
wonderful jacket for uh, winter and going into the, the spring months. Um, so this is just gonna be in my car. Let me set this down over here somewhere. Okay. Pack these into the interior. All right, and my bag is not heavy right now. It's really, uh, this is a good little business here. I wanted to show you my shoes. I like these kinds of hiking boots. Um, and like I said, what I do is I take the laces and I'll just tie the laces around the top part. And that's how I keep them together with my to-go bag in my car. Um, and just in case I'm not wearing shoes I need. And if I wanna go hiking sometime, guess what? I've got them in my car ready to go. <laughs> so that's really good. Put my shoes down there for right now. All right, let's address first aid. So what I've got, uh, first aid wise for now, uh, knowing where we're, we're at and where we're located, um, I like to have a form of quick clot around. By the way, you can make your own quick clot. If you've got yarrow herb growing around you, uh, or if you wanna bring a little pack of cayenne powder and kale and clay, you can easily whip up your own quick clot um, if you don't have the commercial kind. So just know that I do have an article on my website about how to use it, um, how to create your own quick clot. And it's natural. Um, I've used it. That's actually what I mostly use. This is for a dire, dire, dire emergency. <laughs> but it's good to have and it's lightweight. I've got an ankle wrap just in case something gets twisted. My multi-tool. My two Mylar blankets. Um... And let's see here, I wanted to talk, we're talking uh, first aid, and the multi-tool is a multi-tool. It, it can be for everything, first aid, self-defense, using to help you out <laughs> in certain ways. Um, but also along with my first aid stuff, um, I've got an inhaler, this is an aromatherapy inhaler. And I love this one because it's a mood boosting inhaler. So if you're under a lot of stress, um, you know, and you're in a situation where you need to function and you're like kind of losing it. I love, love using essential oils for situations like this. They are incredibly helpful for the limbic system in your brain. And it's not woo woo, you guys, it's because of the chemistry. I am a certified level two aromatherapist. I'm working on my clinical work right now. And your essential oils and your herbs should and can be, can and should be um, an integral part of your uh, preparedness and your survival set, okay? So I've got an inhaler here. Um, I've got a couple of roller bottles. This one is for aches and pains and I do suffer from carpal tunnel and this is very, very helpful. Um, this roller bottle is for sinus issues. Going into the uh, late winter and early spring, um, you know, allergies are a possibility. So depending on who you're traveling with or if it's for yourself, you might want to consider that. Um, and then we've got um, little bottles of my basic essential oils. So what I've got here is peppermint. Peppermint is incredible for energizing um, and waking you up and helping you with focus and concentration. I've got lavender, again, for calming and soothing and helping with anxiety. And then tea tree essential oil is exceptional if you're wounded, you have bug bites, you're suffering from different kinds of um, just skin issues or ailments. So I live, and they're small, you guys. <laughs> essential oil bottles are super tiny, they don't take up a lot of space, and they don't weigh much. So they're perfect to have in your get home bag. I'm gonna add all these things to my gallon size bag. along with my life straw. The life straw is really nice to have. I'm gonna keep my rag too. If you know that you're gonna be traveling near waterways, which we are up here, um, you know, if you need to get water and you want it to be filtered and clean so that it's potable and drinkable, it's just really nice to have. All righty. So that's what's in this gallon size bag at this point. Um, my multi-tool, I'm gonna go ahead and add to the pouch in the front, actually got a smaller pouch here. I'm going to put it in just so that it's um, 
easily accessible, but not lost in the bag. <laughs> okay, um, for snacks, I've got nuts. I've got Band-Aids, forgot those. We put those in the gallon size bag with the other emergency items. Um, but I've got nuts and flaxseed crackers, and I find these are, are both really filling and helpful uh, um, in terms of having something to eat while you're traveling. For water, I'm just going to carry one liter of the Smart Water, knowing that uh, if I need to hop down by the river, which the rivers up here are everywhere near the highways where we travel, so I can use my life straw if need be. But I have a, a liter just to get me by until that until I get home. Okay, and this is going to go in my front pocket of this backpack. I love this backpack. I've had it for goodness, almost 20 years, I think. It's really old, but it's a very, good, very good one. It's been on a lot of hikes with me, and now it serves as my, my get-home bag. It's a Kelty, and it's just a really uh, wonderful uh, backpack with lots of space in it. Um, all right, self-defense. I already mentioned that I'm not really going to talk too much about self-defense, but I think you do need something. <laughs> and, and so what I will talk about here uh, is I've got some pepper spray, which is excellent. And I'm going to also keep it with my multi-tool. And I've got, um, let's see here. A pen. <laughs> Believe it or not, pens are, really helpful if you're in a situation where you need to, you know, uh, give somebody a good jab. So something hard, metal, you can find things with points and, and things like this. I, I don't really get too into the self-defense. I kind of leave that up to uh, Mr. V, but I know I should, but that's where I'm at right now. Okay. Um, the matches are staying. And of course, I love this flashlight. This is a flashlight that um, you can adjust the brightness on um, just by, and you can also make it strobe or you can make it still. It's a, it's a pretty handy little flashlight gadget. And I like it. It's going to stay here. Um, my matches. I'm going to put my matches in its own little section in here in their own little sections. These are, again, they're waterproof, which I find is a really good idea to have on hand. And I'm going to bring some extra batteries for my little flashlight. All right, I'm also going to bring um, a partially used roll of toilet paper. I'm not going to be using a whole bunch of it, I know this. And you can, nice thing about these, you can just squish them down and make them fit where you need to. I'm gonna bring my duct tape. Uh, because duct tape is just a really good thing to have on hand in case you need it. And I'm also going to keep my nylon cording. Um, again, you can do tons of things with cord, so just there you go. Um, in terms of um, a survival kit or a, um, a first aid kit, I do, I do like the first aid kits. I'm not going to keep this one in my bag though. Um, I'm going to let Mr. V carry that one. And then this is a survival kit that I just love, uh, but he's also going to carry that because I find it's heavy. And I, you know, you don't want to have too much weight. Right now, this bag feels great. It's not too heavy. It's packed really well with the supplies I might need. Um, and it's easy to keep in my car. Okay. So basically, what I like to think of when I'm packing my to-go bag, or my get, not my to-go bag, sorry, my get-home bag, are just the essentials. A little bit of shelter, your clothing, your food, some self-defense, and, you know, think about comfort. Uh, oh, and, you know, first aid kinds of things that are easy, that are uh, nice to carry. Uh, there's no reason to carry a, a big, huge medical pack <laughs> in your get home bag unless you want to. And that's the nice thing about get home bags. They are completely flexible and up to you uh, to, you know, make the way you want them. And, and one more thing I'm going to say about a get home bag is this. Um, the reason that I started having a get home bag in my vehicle was because one day at school I was stuck. Um, 
and so was another teacher. It turns out neither of us had jumper cables and it was getting dark and we could not find the custodian. Uh, and finally we did find him. He was clear in, in another building um, and it was late. And, you know, I'm thinking, well, I am gonna have to walk home. <laughs> and we were in an area where cell phones didn't really work very well. So it just, you know, was one of those things. And I just obviously hoped that somebody would come along and pick me up and take me home. But that is not a guarantee, especially not where I was living at that time, um, in this little tiny village of about a hundred people off grid in the mountains and from the school. And, and that was a real eye opener for me. Uh, so luckily the custodian, we finally found him and he got um, the car jumped and everything. But at the same time, I thought, wow, just what if? What if you have to walk home? What if you have to get somewhere? You know, what if you're stuck? And um, that's where the to-go bag idea came from. Uh, coincidentally, I read a... Um, what do you call it? I guess it's a preparedness type of, of story. It was a fiction story where these uh, people were on a business trip. There were two women and two men and uh, uh, an emergency happened, a disaster took place and they were stuck. And they were, you know, halfway across the country from their, their homes and they had to get home. So the man, one of the men was prepared with his to-go bag, everybody else was not. What ended up happening in the story was two of them went off together and survived. And obviously it was the guy with the to-go bag <laughs> who kept saving the day, but it was a really great story. And it just, things like that make you think about, you know, the what ifs of the world. And it's not that, you know, you live in fear or that you, you know, are, you know, worrying all the time. That is not the case. That is totally not the case. It's just a matter of setting yourself up, especially if you've got children, so that you can have a better chance of getting where you need to be safely and without too much discomfort. And there is nothing wrong with that. <laughs> All right, so I'm Heidi Villegas. I'm going to sign off. Um, I'll leave a link to this article. I actually wrote an article on this very same bag about four years ago on my website. So I'll leave a link to that. That article has links to many of the things that I use in here. And uh, anyway, I hope you enjoyed this video. I hope it gives you some ideas. And um, stay safe out there. Be prepared. Stay safe. And... Uh, if you want my herbal remedy guide and cheat sheet, it's uh, you can get it in the links above and also down in the description. I hope you'll subscribe to my channel. Stay tuned for more uh, our videos. And if you want to see me talk about other things that we do around here with our chickens or the garden or um, in general, just being prepared uh, with our herbal medicines or the essential oils and natural body care, just let me know. It's good to know what you want to hear. <laughs> All right. I uh, love you guys and I will talk with you soon. Bye-bye.